This film outlines Cambridge Progression Maths, Unit 05756, Calculations with Whole Numbers, Simple Ratio and Direct Proportion. There are eight learning outcomes which assess the following. The four operations on whole numbers, an understanding of place value, recognition of factors, multiples and squares, ratio and proportion, rounding and simple problem solving. Each will be discussed in turn. Learning outcome number one involves recognizing the value of digits in whole numbers up to 10 million. There are two assessment objectives to consider stating the value of each digit in a seven-digit whole number, and order whole numbers in numbers up to seven digits in length. To achieve this, learners must understand the place value system, including decimal numbers, as shown on the slide. 98,435.27 Column headings show that there are five units, or five ones, three tens, four hundreds, eight thousands, nine ten thousands, and after the decimal point, there are two tenths and seven hundredths. Here we can see different ways of expressing this number. For example, nine ten thousands, plus eight thousands, plus four hundreds, plus three tens, plus five ones, plus two tenths, plus seven hundredths, or ninety thousand, plus eight thousand, plus four hundreds, plus thirty, plus five plus two-tenths, plus seven-hundredths. As the column headings move right to left, they increase by 10, demonstrated here by the multiplication of 44 by 10. Zero now appears in the unit column. In reverse, from left to right, we can see the division of 5,500 by 10. Finally, we can see the effect of multiplying 4.63 by 10 and dividing 54.3 by 10. It is important to remember that, for example, 100 is 10 times 10, thus the digits will move two columns to the left when multiplying by 100, and 1000 is 10 times 10 times 10, so dividing by 1000 means the digits move three columns to the right, etc. Demonstrated here by dividing 5550 by 1000. As column headings do not appear above numbers, learners must be able to recall them. For example, working from the units column to the left. Establishing the position of a digit in a number fixes its size, meaning learners ought to be able to answer questions like this one. The answer is the third box because the 3 is in the 10,000 column. Here we can see the same idea as applied to a decimal number, although this is not assessed in this unit. OCR practice uses half spaces as separators, as shown here. However, the use of commas is also perfectly acceptable. Thus, the following questions should be straightforward. This question requires complete comprehension of the place value system to sort numbers into ascending or descending order. Slide 14 shows the first row of numbers entered into the table, and it can be seen that while the first four numbers decrease, the last number is higher than the fourth number and therefore is non-sequential. However, slide 15 showing the numbers from row 2, it can be seen that all the numbers decrease from left to right, thus meet the demand. For learning outcome number 2, learners should be able to add and subtract whole numbers of any size without using a calculator. This is a key employability skill. Placing numbers in columns prior to calculation, learners must use the place value system to line up numbers in the correct order, thus adding 12,345 and 5,432. The two should be written under the 5 as shown here. A common mistake performing subtractions is to subtract the smaller digit from the larger digit within the column. Thus they might subtract the 3 from the 6 in the units column and the 4 from the 5 in the 10s column. 
one common method known as decomposition works as follows. 3 subtract 6 can't be done. So make the 3 into 13 by borrowing a 10 from the next column. The 4 then becomes a 3. Now 6 from 13 is 7. Next, 5 from 3 can't be done, so borrow a 10 from the next column. The 5 then becomes a 4. 5 from 13 is 8. Finally, in the column of hundreds, 4 subtract 1 is 3. This gives you the correct answer of 387. How does this work? By decomposing or partitioning numbers into an alternative form, in the example, using 543, the 43 represents 40 plus 3, by borrowing a 10 from the 40, the 40 plus 3 becomes 30 plus 13, and in the next step repeating the process, the 500 plus 30 becomes 400 plus 130. So the original number 543 is decomposed into 400 plus 130 plus 13. For learning outcome number 3, learners should be able to multiply whole numbers. With up to and including three digits by whole numbers from 1 to 99 and by hundreds and thousands. This can effectively be split into two parts. One part dealing with multiplication by any number up to 99, and the other part dealing with multiplication by multiples of 10 or 100 or 1000. The first part, for example, multiplying 345 by 23 then aligning the numbers in the unit column gives the calculation shown here. The procedure works like this. 5 multiplied by 3 equals 15. Write the 5 in the units column and carry the 1, for 110, into the column of 10s. 4 multiplied by 3 equals 12. And then add the carried forward 1, making 13. Write 3 in the column of 10s and carry the 1 into the column of 100s. 3 multiplied by 3 equals 9. Add the 1, giving 10, which is written in the line next to the 3. Now multiply by the 2. This represents 20, so write 0 in the units column and then proceed as before multiplying each digit in 345 by 2. Finally, add the numbers in the two rows to get the answer. 7,935. The second part of this learning outcome refers to multiplication by 10, 100, 1000. This is best explained using a place value table. Taking 435 as an example, multiplying by 10 means every digit becomes 10 times greater and effectively moves one column to the left. Multiplying by 100, the digits move two columns to the left, etc. The decimal point doesn't move and spaces are filled with zero. For learning outcome four, learners must be able to divide whole numbers with up to three digits by single digit numbers, two digit numbers including multiples of 10 and multiples of 100. For example, to divide 182 by seven, the division can be set out as shown here. This is how it works. 7 into 1 won't go. 7 into 18 goes 2 with a remainder of 4. 7 multiplied by 2 equals 14. This remainder is placed in front of the next digit, 2, making 42. 7 into 42 goes 6. Next, dividing 420 by 30 works as shown here. 30 into 4 won't go. 30 into 42 goes 1, with a remainder of 12. This remainder is placed in front of the next digit, 0, making 120. 30 into 120 goes 4. Division of multiples of 10 moves each digit one column to the right. By 100, moves digits two columns to the right, etc. For learning outcome 5, learners must be able to recognise factors, multiples and squares of whole numbers. This learning outcome contains two parts. The first is 
to use factors and partitioning in multiplication involving non-calculator methods. The second is to identify square numbers up to 100 and multiples of 10, 50, 100 and 1000. Learners must understand the difference between factors and multiples. Factors are numbers that divide into other numbers. For example, the factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. And of 16 are 1, 2, 4, 8 and 16. Note that square numbers have an odd number of factors. Multiples of a number are those numbers that are in that number's times table. So the multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, 24, etc. And the multiples of 10 are 10, 20, 30, 40, etc. We looked at partitioning earlier in this unit. It is recognised that, for example, 43 could be written as 30 plus 13. In the types of question encountered in this unit, learners are expected to recognise that, for example, 6 multiplied by 15, which equals 90, is the same as 6 multiplied by 10 plus 6 multiplied by 5, which is equal to 60 plus 30, which equals 90. The 15 has been partitioned into 10 plus 5. So questions such as those shown here simply require recognising a missing factor. Thus 15 multiplied by 17 equals 3 multiplied by something multiplied by 17. The first question requires learners to recall that 15 equals 3 by 5, and so 5 will be written in the answer box. For 99 multiplied by 17 equals something by 17 minus 17. Learners must recognise that 99 is equivalent to 100 minus 1, so 100 will be entered in the box. Learners must know the square numbers up to 100. All too often, while there is recognition that, for example, 4 is 2 squared or 49 is 7 squared, learners forget that 1 also is a square number. 1 is 1 squared. These numbers ought to be known and recognised. This slide shows the key square numbers. Multiples of 10, 50, 100, 1000 can be identified using key triggers. For example, all the multiples will end in zero. The non-zero digits in multiples of 50 will be numbers in the five times table. So 650 is a multiple of 50, but 560 isn't. For learning outcome number six, learners must be able to use simple ratio and direct proportion. Learners must appreciate and understand that ratio and proportion are basically the same. Ratio is used to compare part to part, as can be seen in the example. An example of direct proportion is shown here. Simplifying ratios means dividing the numbers in that ratio by the largest common factor. So simplifying the ratio 4 to 16 gives 1 to 4. Simplifying 3 to 9 gives 1 to 3. To calculate quantities in a given ratio, the method is shown in the example here. The sum of money is to be divided into three parts. The ratio 1 to 2 can be thought of as one part to two parts, so three parts altogether. £30 divided by 3 equals £10, so Anil gets £10, one part, and Jang gets £20, two parts. Calculating quantities using direct proportion and simple multipliers is also best illustrated through an example. The ratio is 1 to 5, i.e. 1 part to 5 parts, so 6 parts in total. 1 part will be £240 divided by 6, which gives £40. So Karen will get 5 lots of £40, which is £200. For learning outcome number 7, learners need to be able to round numbers to a given degree of accuracy. There are three assessment criteria. Two are concerned with rounding, and one requires an appreciation of the context 
to decide whether to round up or round down. Learners must be able to round numbers up or down to the nearest power of 10. A question asking for 27,764 to be rounded to the nearest 1,000 requires learners to identify the 1,000 column in the place value table and then consider the size of the numbers to the right of that column. So the number in the thousands column is 7, representing 7,000. The number to the right is 764. The question to be answered is, is 764 nearer to 1,000 or to 0? Clearly, it's nearer to 1,000, so 7,764 is nearly 8,000, and the number is 28,000. Interpreting remainders requires learners to understand the context. In this question, Amy can fill 5 skips completely because 45 divided by 8 equals 5. However, this will leave 5 tonnes of rubble, and Amy therefore needs one more skip to remove these 5 tonnes. But the example here requires rounding down. Amy will only be able to fill 8 boxes. For learning outcome number 8, learners must be able to solve one- and two-step problems, expressed in both word and algebraic form, resulting in whole number answers. These questions expect a learner to work through the demands of a question systematically. Look at this question. A 450-gram chicken will require 20 minutes of cooking time plus an extra 20 minutes. A chicken three times as heavy will require three times 20 minutes plus the extra 20 minutes. The first task is to calculate how many lots of 450 grams there are in 900 grams. This calculation is shown as 900 divided by 450 and the answer is 2, which must now be multiplied by 20, so the missing sign is the multiplication sign x. Frequently asked questions are in the form A equals P multiplied by Q minus R. A equals P multiplied by open brackets Q minus R. Close brackets. Find the value of A when P equals 10, Q equals 7, and R equals 3. <laughs>